All right, guys, in this video, we're going to talk about a publicly released AP Physics 1 free response question. Uh, this is consistent with Unit 3 stuff, so dealing with circular motion and universal gravitation, and this one's specifically kind of about the combination of those two things. So uh, kind of the physics of objects orbiting in a circular path at a constant speed. So question reads, a spacecraft of mass m is in a clockwise circular orbit of radius capital R around Earth, as shown in the figure above. The mass of the Earth is capital M sub E. It says, uh, part A, in the figure below, draw and label the forces, not components, that act on the, space, the spacecraft. Each force must be represented by a distinct arrow starting on and pointing away from the spacecraft. So, um, when a spacecraft is out in space, a satellite or a spacecraft or an astronaut orbiting in a circular path, um, they're well beyond the Earth's atmosphere, so there's no frictional effect from the air. The only significant force on this spacecraft is the gravitational force of attraction uh, between the spacecraft and the Earth. So the Earth is pulling the spacecraft towards the center of the mass of the Earth. Pretty basic, straightforward. Gets a little more complicated right here. So part B for the first part says derive an equation for the orbital period of the spacecraft. Remember the orbital period is how much time it takes that spacecraft to go all the way around the Earth once at that um, radius of curvature. And it says we have to ex um, derive an equation or get an expression for the orbital period only in terms of lowercase m, that's the mass of the spacecraft, uh, the mass of the Earth, and capital R being not the radius of the planet of the Earth, but the orbital radius, how far away the center of mass of the spacecraft is from the center of mass of the Earth. And we can include any, include any physical constants as appropriate. So if you need to draw anything other than what you have shown in part A to assist in your solution, use the space below. Do not add anything to the figure in part A. Whoops. So um, I went ahead and added some things to the figure in part A. Um, if I would have read that carefully, I wouldn't have done that. I would have maybe done a new diagram right here. Okay, so the only thing that should have been here is just that vector which represents the gravitational force. Okay, so there's a bit here. Um, and how do we approach this? So if we're trying to figure out the orbital period of the spacecraft, uh, remember this is moving at a constant speed. And so um, velocity of something moving at a constant speed is just equal to displacement over time. And if the spacecraft goes through one complete orbit or uh, travels all the way around in a circular path just once, its displacement is the circumference of its orbit, which is 2 pi r, r being the radius of curvature of the orbit. That guy right there. And the displacement, and we just take the displacement divided by the time. This is the displacement during one path uh, of orbit. This is the time for one complete orbit, and that's what we define the period as. And so this is the equation where we're essentially going to get the period. So we're allowed to use r, right, the radius of curvature of the orbit. Uh, pi is just a constant. We can use that. So we just need to figure out how fast is the space ship... Well, sorry. We need an expression for how fast the spaceship is traveling uh, in its circular orbit. So what is the speed of the spacecraft? We'll call that V sub s. So if we just rearrange this equation for the period, we've got 2 pi r, which is the circumference, divided by the orbital speed. So if we can get an expression for that, we just plug it into here, and we'll figure out what our expression is for the orbital period. Well, how do we figure out how fast something is traveling? Um, you know, what's that tangential velocity at any point that this thing has to travel? Uh, remember, at a specific distance around the Earth, of a, you know, with the Earth's mass, you can't go any speed and expect to move in a circular path. Uh, you, there's a very precise speed at this, at a given distance, r, let's say, that you have to go so you travel in a circular path. So here's the equations we've got to use to, to figure that out. So anytime something is moving in a circular path at a constant speed, well, the sum of the forces has to point towards the center of the circular path or centripetally, which means if the sum of the forces is pointed centripetally, that means the object is accelerating centripetally. The acceleration of the spacecraft is pointed towards the center of that circular path, 
And this equation tells us how big that ex centripetal acceleration is. It's equal to the speed it's moving at squared divided by the radius of curvature. So this equation for circular motion, that's the only time you use this, tells us how, uh, how big the centripetal acceleration is. And the acceleration of any object, whether it's linear acceleration in any direction, or centripetal acceleration is also given by the sum of the forces divided by the mass. And so we can set these two equations equal to one another, which we did right here, to give us the equation which relates the size of the sum of the forces on the spaceship, which, which is pointed centripetally, divided by the mass of the spaceship, has to be equal to its speed squared divided by its radius of curvature. So all this information is talking about the sum of the forces, the mass, the speed, and the radius of curvature of the thing moving in a circular path. So let's put this general equation then, based on this, in terms of this situation. What is equal to the sum of the forces in the spaceship? It's just the only significant force on the spaceship, which is the force of gravitational attraction that the spaceship feels. Divided by the mass of the spaceship is equal to the speed of the spaceship squared divided by r. And we're doing this, remember, because we want an expression for how fast the spaceship is traveling in its circular orbit. Well. How do we know how much force um, an object of mass m sub s feels at some distance from the Earth? Well, it's not m times little g, you know, where we say force of gravity is equal to m times g, because that's only if something is right next to the Earth's surface. As you get farther out, the gravitational field strength is less than 10 newtons per kilogram, and so it's going to feel less than m times little g. Remember, this equation tells us for any two masses, how big the gravitational force of attraction is. It's, you know, the two masses multiplied together times the universal gravitation constant, that's the physical constant which we are allowed to use, divided by r, and r is the distance between the center of the two masses that are attracting one another gravitationally. And so in this case, we would put in there capital R, because that's what was given. So instead of f sub g, the gravitational attraction the spaceship feels, we could plug in our uh, law of universal gravitation right here. Big G times the mass of the Earth times the mass of the spacecraft divided by how far apart they are squared, capital R squared. That's divided by the mass of the spaceship, right? And that's equal to the speed of the spaceship squared divided by its radius of curvature. Before we move on, there's a few things that cancel out. Notice we've got the mass of the spaceship and the numerator and the denominator. That cancels out. And on the left-hand side, we've got r squared in the denominator. On the right-hand side, we have just r in the denominator. So we can cancel out the one on the right-hand side, and it cancels out one of those on the left-hand side. The left-hand side is just big G times the mass of the Earth divided by just r, not r squared. That's equal to speed squared. So we get this equation right here. The square of this orbital speed is equal to the universal gravitation constant times the mass of the Earth divided by the radius of curvature of that spacecraft. And so if we square root both sides, we get that the needed orbital speed for this spacecraft, and actually any spacecraft at this distance r, is just equal to the square root of g times the mass of the Earth times its orbital radius. So notice in this expression, I just said, it doesn't depend on the mass of the thing orbiting. Mass, remember, canceled out over here. And so how fast something has to be traveling to be in a circular orbit at a given distance is independent of the mass of the thing orbiting. So now that we have an expression, notice it's in terms of physical constant, that's g, the mass of the Earth, and r, and so that's valid. So let's now plug that in to our period equation right here. Remember, so period is equal to circumference over the speed of the orbit. 2 pi r is the circumference. Here's an expression for the, the speed, the needed speed for a circular orbit at that radial distance. We just plug that in right there. And so here is our final expression. This is how many, the, the period, which is how much time it would take an object to orbit the, the Earth just once. And uh, that would end up giving you a time in seconds. It's equal to 2 pi times r divided by the square root of big G, or capital G, times the mass of the Earth divided by the radius of orbit. Okay, so part two says, 
a, spec a second spacecraft of mass 2m, so now it's twice the mass of the spaceship, is placed in a circular orbit with the same radius. Is the orbital period of the second spacecraft greater than, less than, or equal to the orbital period of the first spacecraft? Well, we just got done saying that the speed at which it travels to make that specific circular path uh, is independent of the mass. So if we double the mass, that means the speed still has to be the same. And if the speed is still the same, then the cir circumference is the same, we would expect the time it takes to go around that circumference also to be the same. So the orbital period will be equal to what it was when the mass was just 1m. So yeah, looking at the expression for orbital period, we did all of that work in the first part of uh, A. There's no little m for the mass of the satellite it canceled out, and so the period does not depend on the mass of the spacecraft, just like the speed at which it needs to go does not depend on the mass of the spacecraft. So on to the last part, which is part C. And we're going to end up using something we derived in part A to figure this out. So it says the spacecraft is moving into a new circular orbit that is a larger radius, greater than r, as shown in the figure below. So here it was before, is orbiting at this distance, capital R, and now the spacecraft is moving to a larger radial distance, so greater than r. The question is, is the speed of the spacecraft in the new orbit greater than, less than, or equal to the original speed? So remember, in order to move in a circular path at a given distance, there's a specific speed. And the question is, does that speed depend on how far you are, far you are away from the planet? If you remember back to what we derived in part A, the answer is yes. Actually, no, that was part B. So, well, let's look at it and then we'll answer the question. So, from part B, we found that an expression to figure out how fast you need to be traveling to be in a circular orbit at that distance is this. The speed is equal to the square root of g times the mass of the Earth divided by the orbital radius. Um, it doesn't depend on the mass, but it definitely does depend on the radius. If r becomes bigger in this equation, we're dividing by a larger number on the right-hand side, so as r becomes bigger, the needed speed becomes smaller. So as r increases, the needed orbital speed has to decrease if uh, the spaceship wants to be traveling in a circular path at that new larger radius. So as the orbital radius increases, the needed orbital speed to be in a circular orbit is smaller.